Welcome back to Ubad's lab and today I have a little bit of a different video for you guys. I'm going to be explaining carbon nanotubes and how they work. Alright, so I think I should start off with uh, how I got interested in carbon nanotubes and why I wanted to make this video today. So I was reading this book uh, called Physics of the Impossible by Michio Kaku and I thought it was really interesting. Uh, and I came across uh, in the chapter about force fields. So if you haven't guessed, it's all about physics of the impossible, right? So he talked about how these potential force fields could be um, reinforced with carbon nanotubes. And then I got interested in carbon nanotubes and started doing research on them. And I wanted to share some of what I've learned about them uh, and teach you uh, about carbon nanotubes with more of a chemistry perspective. Uh, I thought that'd be interesting. And so I guess we'll start off with a carbon nanotube uh, right here. So a carbon nanotube is basically a, uh, a tube that has a diameter of basically an atom. It's, uh, and it's made by carbons, that, uh, a carbon chain that's um, that's wrapped in a, uh, a tube shape. So if you unveil this tube, cut it apart, and lay, lay out the material, it would be this right here. It would be graphene. So carbon nanotubes are basically gr graphene, but wrapped up into a tube. So what's so special about this material? Um, what's so special is that it's really strong. It's really th uh, thermally conductive as well. So why is it so strong? Uh, we have to look at um, some stuff to, uh, to, to learn about that, to understand why it's so strong. So if we look here, we can see that the carbons, uh, these are all carbons in a hexagonal shape. So if we look at this, uh, these carbons, so right now it's laid out as graphene, right? So just carbon, but many things are just carbon. Charcoal is basically just carbon. Um, diamonds are basically just carbon. What, what, but what makes this special is the type of bonds that are made. So if we look, if we, uh, look at just one uh, carbon atom, we see that it has uh, bonds in three directions. So let's single out one of these uh, carbon atoms. We have a carbon uh, bonds in three directions like this but if we look at these um at these bonds carbon uh has four valence electrons so we're gonna have to have another bond somewhere so we'll put one here so we can see that in these in this structure there's gonna have to be a double bond uh surrounding uh surrounding the uh, carbon atoms so um so this uh double bond creates um an an sp2 electron configuration for the uh, carbon. So, um, so this sp2 electron conf configuration uh, makes this uh, extra strong. And if we look at this uh, material, uh, graphene, uh, we can see that it's 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 basically just a 2D structure. Uh, there's no uh, z-axis on this because uh, what would the depth be? The depth would be basically just one atom of depth um, since this is just one um, this is atoms laid out uh, molecule this way uh, like a sheet like a sheet of paper basically um, um, so uh, another reason this would be so strong is that with normal with normal materials um, this is just one molecule. That, that's one of the crazy things to think about. The entire material is just one molecule. Uh, lots of materials have, uh, have uh, transitions between uh, different molecules and uh, having one molecule allows the, um, there to be no weak spots within this material. So that, that also allows the uh, strength of this material to be stronger. So what would potential applications be for such a material? Uh, obviously, due to its strength, uh, it can be used in military for as like st uh, very strong rope or something, 
And also, as I mentioned before, uh, maybe as a possible uh, force field to catch to catch things. Uh, this could be very strong to catch like projectiles. Um, and another thing that um, was kind of a surprising use that's come about with it, uh, with carbon nanotubes specifically, not just uh, graphene, um, is um, is making a very black paint. So uh, how that works is, so we have uh, a material laid out, and it has carbon nanotubes on it. So it has let's say these are the carbon nanotubes okay so these sides of it uh, it'd be a tube wrapped like this molecule but, wra but wrapped around in a tube shape so and the diameter would basically just be an atom right so this is the material that has carbon nanotubes laid on, on it so this material would be very very black like uh, it messes with your eyes. You guys should Google it if you haven't seen it yet, what carbon nanotube paint looks like. So what basically happens is uh, when photons go towards this material, uh, they get trapped inside of the, of the carbon nanotubes. So there's photons coming and it lands right inside of the carbon nanotubes. So it gets captured. So there's lots of darkness. That's what darkness basically is like the the capturing of of uh, photons so this definitely has lots of great applications um, other than commercial applications for art and making things have very vibrant black backgrounds um, it can be used um, in space so surprisingly you think space is pretty dark but the sun is very bright in space uh, and uh, it can be used in spaceships to capture some of that uh, excess light that um, the astronauts would have to deal with and that can get in the way and with photography in space um, using such a paint can help capture the excess light uh, and create uh, a better uh, photograph from space um, and yeah, uh, that's basically all I got to share about um, carbon nanotubes. If you have uh, any interesting facts about graphene or carbon nanotubes, please leave that down in the description. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it.